Good evening, Mike, and everyone from here in Wichita. These documents we obtained here in town show that Ford's ex-girlfriend filed a complaint against him on February 5th. Let's take a look at the neighborhood where this incident occurred. Now, we did go to that neighborhood and knocked on the girlfriend's door earlier today. She was not at home. Records do show police picked her up at 645 last night at her home after the shootings. Now, we're not showing the home for her protection. Now, according to the complaint, on February 5th, a, a verbal fight became physical, quote, by him pushing me, then grabbing me. He placed me in a chokehold from behind. I couldn't breathe. He then got me to the ground while choking me, finally releasing me. Referring to Ford, she goes on to say, quote, he is an alcoholic, violent, depressed. It's my belief he is in desperate need of medical and psychological help exclamation point. Now, Wichita police answered the woman's call for help, but despite the police report noting the woman was battered, leaving visible injuries, there is no record of Ford being arrested or spending any time in the county jail. Now, on the same day as the domestic violence incident, a local judge did issue a temporary restraining order against Ford, ordering him to leave the home and leave his girlfriend alone. Additionally, in that order, it said if he had a concealed carry permit for a gun, it was subject to revocation under Kansas law. We have since learned, as we reported at the top of the newscast, Ford is a convicted felon, and a woman is now accused of giving him the two guns used in yesterday's shootings. Now, as for that temporary restraining order, we told you about Ford was notified at work yesterday that temporary order had become permanent. A short time later, the shootings then took place. Reporting live in downtown Wichita, I'm investigator Andy Alcock, 41 Action News.